and I found this perfect glass. It says here for the booze. Oh, I love that. I want to <laughs> give this to him. I like that he's embracing the booze, you know, because yes, he's I do there. Too. He didn't care. He's there to win races. No. He's not there to make friends. No. This is his job is to go out and win. Hey, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of Mike's Are Hot. I'm Caitlin Vinci alongside Heather DeBo. How's it going What's out there? What's up, girl? Phoenix, Arizona <laughs> on the West Coast. Yeah. How is it? It's good. It puts the heat up on you, and the girls are fine as California. I think it's the line. I don't know. <laughs> I love that. That's a good tagline. That could Heck be your yeah. tagline if you're a real housewife. Ooh, I like that. Thank you, because I've always wanted to be on that show. <laughs> right? And I've always wondered what my tagline would be. So you just helped well, me out go. there, Caitlin. So you said it is hot there because we finally have like 60 some degree weather here. I'm wearing a hoodie for the first that, time and in I'm like months. I am really jealous. Um, yeah. I think it's starting to cool off. We're still in the hundreds during the day, but in the mornings and <gasps> evenings, it's getting very nice. So uh, very nice. I think it's only 75 out right now and it's oh, what, eight o'clock in the that's morning. So that's a, that's not a too fast bad improvement. For you. Look at yeah. you guys moving up. Hey, in the we're being cool. See, we're it always cool. gets cold. <laughs> cool. Do you like that? We're being cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> it always gets colder my like point of reference is Halloween because anytime yes. you go trick-or-treating and you're outside I just always remember as a kid it's cold out now so I know. that's when we really know that fall and winter is coming is um, yes. Halloween here in Arizona which I know is almost November but whatever that's how we roll <laughs> right to quote the comedian uh, Trey Kennedy hallelujah it's getting fall in here <laughs> pumpkin spice are you pumpkin spice girl because I'm not um, really I'm sorry I'm not a basic bitch I can't do it <laughs> I can't do it <laughs> Thanks to those that are, but you know, I'm not, I'm not a PSL. I'm not, PSL I don't girl. even drink coffee. So I don't why drink would coffee I even do either. That? Hey, go exactly. team. High five virtually High five on that. to the no coffee team. If I'm going to Starbucks, it's one of those fruity refresher thingies Ooh, or a yeah. tea. Yummy. Yeah. I, just, I go there I for their the breakfast sandwiches. Deal. Yeah. There you go. I know. Not a coffee drinker. <laughs> All right. Turning the corner. Enough yes. about food and fall and pumpkin spice. Our show today, I'm so excited about it. The theme is growth of women in racing, and Tony Breininger is going to be with us. I know you cover her all the time, of course, from ARCA and Trucks. Yes, so I've been around her all season, and this is um, really exciting to have her on. I just am so impressed with what she's done at such a young age, not just in racing, but just in general in, like, what do you want to say, pop culture or just, totally. you know, Instagram, TikTok, like she's kind of all over the place. And I'm really interested to talk to her more about those things. But yes, I get to see her almost every weekend in the ARCA series. She runs for Venturini Motorsports. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really excited. This is going to be a good one. Women growth in racing, of course. This is an all-female-led podcast. That's we have right. a female producer, so we're kind of all go about Krista. the girl power. Yeah, go Krista. Krista Luter in the house. <laughs> in the house. Um <laughs> Yes, she will be a great conversation, I think. And she, to your point, she's just built a huge brand and has brought so many new sponsors into the sport. So I'm very curious to hear about that from her and what that's been like. And she's proving it on the track, which is the most important thing. She's been having great results this year. So Absolutely. looking forward to having her join the show and looking forward to everything going on in the sport right now because it was a newsy weekend, to say the yes. least. Yes, uh, and it lots. started out before the cup series race even happened with the Zane Smith announcement of track house, taking him under their wing, basically the Alliance they have with Spire Motorsports. He's going to run a full season in the cup series. I love this story because Zane Smith to me is just such an incredible talent. We've of course watched him in the truck series over the last several years. He's a past champion, West coast guy, very cool, hip, trendy. His fiance has won the better half dash like 16 times in a row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're yep. just a cool couple. And Absolutely. you can just always tell the level of appreciation he has for every opportunity that he's gotten. It's very evident um, in his press conferences and post-race interviews. Yes, that was neat to see him get so emotional about the opportunities. And it really reminds us like what these drivers and, and guys and girls are going through in their career and how hard they are fighting and clawing just to get that next opportunity. And I've known Zane since the K&N West series. That's so right. back on the West Coast... You know, he was kind of one of those up and coming guys and 
on those smaller series, you really have a lot more time to get to know people because you're at the track you do, all day yeah. and there's, you know, a smaller field, smaller track. So you spend a lot of time. So it's been nice to get to know him and see how much he's grown. He's one of many k and West drivers that have advanced on to uh, bigger and better things and moving up the ranks of NASCAR. But like you said, he's from Huntington Beach, California. He's one California of the most cool. chill people. Yeah. I think like I always laugh at Zane because so even if he wins a race, he's just like, yeah. That was yeah. cool. I'm cool. Like, everything's great. You know, That's like, so it's good. Yeah, it's good. Reddick, as- Larson, all yes. those guys act like that. They're just, like, yep. steady eddies, you know? Yes. It's that West Coast vibe, like that West Coast surfer vibe. dude chilling. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but I just am very happy for him and proud of him just yes. seeing him uh, getting to where he's going to go. So, yeah. Yeah, really and, neat. of course, his sights are still set on another title back-to-back in the truck series. That series mm-hmm. has three more races to go. Two left in this round. Right now, he's below the cut line, but if I'm a guessing person and a betting person, I don't think that he will stay there. So, the yeah. other news that came out is Daniel Hemrick. He's going to be back to the Cup Series, which is another great story, competitor, person mm-hmm. that we've both covered from when he first kind of started out and came onto the scene. Very humble beginnings. I love that he's getting a shot to run cup races again for colleague, past champion, the Xfinity Series. What do you think we're going to see out of this move? You know what I hope to see from this move? It's a backflip. I just want to see oh, yeah. him do more backflips because <laughs> more we haven't seen flips. one in a while. More <laughs> backflips. Um, but, yeah, just getting that opportunity to once again go up to the highest level of racing. Obviously, Colleague Racing, a great organization. They're doing a lot of big things with all their drivers, no matter what platform, whether it's Xfinity or Cup. Um, so I think he's obviously a good fit there because he's been working with that team for a while. So, yeah, I mean, just everything you said, I I ditto it about Daniel Hemmer. He's it. always so nice. Um, so very, nice. very deserving, very humble guy. I agree. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Good things happening to good people. I like that. Yes. Um, so it's obviously been two weeks since our last show and you and I both had a lot going on in this two week time period, I would say. Uh, yes. so for me, I had kind of a, a busy couple weeks with some unique things on the board. The first one of course was catwalk for a cause. I was hosting that with Rick Allen from NBC and we want to send our sincere condolences to Sherry Pollock's family, to all of her friends, the entire NASCAR community of course, right now is mourning the loss of a good friend to many of us. So Sherry Pollock's, you know, she's been a fixture in the NASCAR community for a very long time. And it's amazing to see her philanthropic works firsthand. You know, I've been a part of Catwalk in a variety of different roles for years now. And it's just every single year when you see the Catwalk kids, you know, walk the runway and see everything that her and Martin Truex Jr. have put into pediatric cancer, ovarian cancer, their impact is so huge. And they've just used their platforms for the greater good. And um, we're all really going to miss Sherry. Yeah, I know you had a special relationship with her as well. Um, unfortunately I didn't get the opportunity to work with her a lot, but I was around her at different events like your wedding, for example. And gosh, what an incredible human being, just a light to everyone. And, um, obviously we'll be missed a lot by a lot of people, but she's made such an impact and she's around for a long time in that sense where Mm -hmm. her charity and everything that she's done is going to impact lives for years and years to come. So yeah, no question. It's been really neat to see all the positive, um, posts and comments and people sharing their stories of Sherry and continuing Mm -hmm. that legacy that she's built. I think it's really rare that you see a person who is so widely loved and accepted and appreciated in this industry. And she was always one of those people. So we're thinking about her family. We're praying for her family and her friends. Um, And yeah, she's going to be very missed. So that was one of the things that I was doing. A great event, as always. Great to see the kids and the happiness that event brings to them. And they own the runway all the time. (laughs) You know, they just, it's the cutest thing to see and and a really, really great cause. So that was one thing I was doing. And then I was also in Bristol with you. Yes. Um, We weren't working together, sadly. But I went down to Bristol to host a panel for Women in Motorsports, which ties in so well to the theme of today's show, I feel like. So... This was a high banks and heels event at the track, and they had Alba Cologne from Hendrick there, two um, kind of marketing PR 
Rolls, uh, as well as another account executive from Hendrick there. So there was a bunch of different ladies that came up and spoke. And it was just so interesting to hear all of their perspectives. I know you know Alba. She's been a fixture, too, in the NASCAR garage for so many years. One of the most fascinating ladies, I would say, in the entire sport. Came here from another country, learned the English language, has risen the ranks through from Chevy to Hendrick. Now she oversees, you know, the competition side within Hendrick. What an awesome woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's probably one of the most well-respected people in the garage area, just for everything that you mentioned. Um, so I'm very happy that you got to do that event because it's always nice to get some of those powerhouse females together. Yes. It's always a nice moment for everyone to just kind of spend some time and really appreciate what each one of them does. And right. I know for you and I, like we've, we're making our way still in the sport, right? But we, there's many that have come before us. So I, totally. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the people that have kind of paved the way in our industry and what we do and who we've looked up to. So for yes. me, I'm gonna name I'm gonna name a few names and then tell like a little quick blip. But um, so Wendy Venturini with uh, Performance Racing Network. Of course, when I met her before, though she was with Fox um, and Speed Channel. That's how long I've known her. She's been a huge help to my career and somebody that I've looked up to. Also, Krista Voda, when she yeah. was with us at Speed Channel. Again, one of the best to ever do anything. I just remember watching her and just always thinking, man, she is top-notch Consummate talent. Consummate professional. Yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Claire B. Lang. Yes. She's probably one Claire of the first B. to ever do <laughs> it, OG. right? And the yes. OG, OG. And gosh, she works hard. And anytime I, I see know. her, she's a hustler. She's running, she's moving, and and really an inspiration then of course jamie little yes. soft spot for her for me because i work with her um, <laughs> on the cup series i'm her pit spotter and then we work together on the arca series and she has been a huge help to me and my career especially as of late i can call her anytime and get advice and she's more than willing to just break it down for me give me yep. tips um feedback all that stuff and i mean gosh if it wasn't for some of those ladies who I knows know. where we would be um it's true who are, who are some for you caitlin well, all of the ones you just mentioned as well, because I've worked with all of them also. Great humans, very helpful to anyone who would ask. It's funny because when I was still in college and I did my senior dissertation on uh, gender you know, disparities within mm -hmm. NASCAR at the time, uh, I cited all of those women in my PowerPoint. <laughs> so there was a picture of like all of them within my PowerPoint presentation. But I would add Shannon Spake to that list, Daniel Trotta as well. Um, those are women too that I've obviously worked with at Fox and I still go to all the time to to ask for advice i remember going to krista when i first got pregnant to and jamie and just trying to ask like how do you do the pit road reporting job while you're pregnant you know there was a lot of different things you had to account for once you had a you know a pregnancy a belly going on because you couldn't even wear your equipment the same so right. all of them have just kind of gone through a lot of unique situations before us or before mm -hmm. me anyways and mm -hmm. so i've been able to lean on them a lot over the years and it, it really does help it helps to have those mentors and those role models in your corner that you can just have as an ally and um yes i'm very grateful for those who've paved the way before us so yeah hopefully we'll help others too as they come along other young women that are looking to come into this so for sure for sure so you were busy at bristol <clears throat> denny yes. hamlin was the big winner Yes, he was. Once again. Uh, yes. 51st career win for old DH. And I, yeah. we both have a special treat for Denny. Yes. I have a prop I want to show, and you have a, <laughs> a rap <laughs> okay. you want to sing. Yes, yes. So we've had a few requests for me to we rap have. on the show because we, we've we talked about it. I am a lyricist, if you will. So I wrote this rap That's this morning. Right. Hopefully I can get it out. Are you ready, Caitlin? Give us your best Eminem okay, here we go. Mile moment here. Come on. <laughs> Eminem. Okay, ready? Let's go. Here we go. <laughs> it's Bristol, baby. The last great Coliseum drivers running that line like they are bottom feeders. We saw beaten and banging under the lights, but unfortunately, we didn't see no fights. 34, 47, 22, and 4. They're walking out the plate off door. Denny Hamlin was your winner. He's eating chicken dinner. And uh, that's as far as I got because I couldn't find a word to rhyme with cucumber. <laughs> What does rhyme with cucumber? I mean, I don't even know what you would uh, say, honestly. I, the only That's thing fantastic. I can think of is lumber, and I don't know where to go with that, so. <laughs> Stay tuned, everybody. We're going to have the final verse of that song, that rap on the next show. <laughs>
<laughs> That's, that was good. I like the no Thank fights you. thing. Yeah, good I know. Point. I was a little bummed because I like to see the tempers flare, and we didn't really we get do. that. But we okay. saw the the tempers flaring from the fan base because yes, now they've did. had this whole thing of booing Denny Hamlin, whether he's driver he's intros or one. when he's yeah, <laughs> when he wins. <laughs> And so when I was at Target yesterday, I was shopping for ha Halloween decor, yeah. and I found this perfect glass. It says, here for the booze. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I want to give this to him. Yeah. And I want to preface this by saying I really admire Denny Hamlin. I think he's a phenomenal talent. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. Uh, humble beginnings. I love his story. I like that he's embracing the booze, you know, because yes, he's I do there. Too. He didn't care. He's there to win races. No. He's not there to make friends. No. This is his job is to go out and win. Mm -hmm. And so now he's kind of just taken on this whole like shift with the fan base. And, and he's like, hey, whatever. Yeah. Here for it. So we are Gosh. here for the booze. Yes, as well, we are. And I, his line at the end when he said that he what, what was it he said about, yeah, well, I beat your favorite driver. Drivers. And Marty, Marty goes, well, who was that? He goes, all of Everybody. them. Like, gosh, yeah, he's, he's so quick in those moments, too. Like, he is. He's, he's pretty witty. funny. He's mm -hmm. very witty. quick on his feet. So, yeah, Denny Hamlin was the man of the hour. Good for him. Uh, once again, proving that uh, he can get it done out at Bristol. And, well, he's really going to make a push for the championship. Maybe this yes, will be his year. We will Maybe see. Maybe it will. To so, be, to be determined. TBD. <laughs> Back to today's topic, though, women in racing. Um, th this is also something I think is so interesting, the fact that the sport has evolved a lot over the years where you're seeing women in, I don't want to say non-traditional roles, but, but kind of, because there's some roles that have sort of become the norm, I guess, for females in the industry. But now it's deviating away from that, and you're seeing females as track operators, uh, you know, pit crew, engineers, marketing, PR, media side. How have you seen it changing since you came in? Yeah, um, I think that when we first started, that was kind of when a push happened for um, female pit crew members. Like, do you remember Christmas Abbott? Do you remember? Oh her? yeah, yeah. We did so she, wheels on her. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like she was one of the ones that I really remember. I don't think she was the first, but I think that's one of the ones that stood out in my mind mm -hmm. as somebody who was kind of trying to break that mold and that barrier. Um, but I think we just had someone in the ARCA series, and forgive me for not remembering her name at this moment, but she was fueling the car. Like, she was the fueler, wow. and I just thought that's pretty incredible because that's that a is. tough position to do. Those fuel cans are not light. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but she had been training uh, for that for a while, and then there's a couple girls that do, you know, tires and – yeah, mm -hmm. and obviously tire specialists, mechanics, Venturini Brianna Motorsports Daniels has, has yep, Brianna yeah. Daniels, mm -hmm. uh, Venturini yeah. has a bunch of girls on their team. So I've it's personally really just seen it go from only maybe one or two to now you see them everywhere. So. Yeah. And you can tell this isn't just checking a box so that a female can fill a role. It's putting women in these positions who are very qualified to be there, who deserve to be there based on merit and, you know, qualifications and their credentials. So there's been a, a big, big shift. And, you know, fortunately for me uh, through Fox, I've been able to do the women in wheels stories and tell a lot of their stories, which I think is helpful because it allows other people to see, hey, there are a lot of females in this industry and doing different roles and maybe I can be there too. So we're we're going to talk about some of that, of course, uh, with Tony when she comes on the show a little later. But yes. um, I know we did a call to action, as yes, we, we do, did. for questions. Do you want to tell us our first question? Yes. I know it's coming from far overseas. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, from the international uh, sensation. sensation, all the way from Brazil, Brazil. Mr. Igor. Brazil. Um, <laughs> Igor wants to know, um, how is it for pit crews staying away from their family for so many days in a row? Like, how do they manage that? So... Um, Caitlin, I'm, I don't have a family, so for me it's a little mm -hmm. bit different, but I think you can speak to this more from where they're coming from, but it's definitely hard to be away from family and friends. Uh, you miss out on a lot. So like, yep. you know, birthdays, weddings, graduations, like you almost have to kind of request off in advance, which sometimes can be hard to do. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think managing it is just making sure you take the time that when you are home to go above and beyond to spend that time with your family. Right. So like absolutely plan accordingly so that, you know, you're gone these days, but let's make sure we plan like something special to do on Tuesday afternoons. Like every Tuesday, that's our family time just to make sure you don't miss 
um, those moments. I agree with all of that. And I think people don't realize the sacrifice that road crew, pit crew really put in and, and really the whole industry as a whole, especially if you're a full-time traveler, um, what it takes to stay focused and dedicated to this for 10 months of the year and beyond. Cause really, mm -hmm. if you work on a team, you're working year round, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. So to your point, just making the most of the moments you do have with your family. I think I speak for probably the whole industry. Everyone is very glad that Bristol race happened on Saturday night because they were allowed a Sunday home uh, with families, which we don't have many Saturday night races anymore. So those are really rare occasions to be home on a Sunday. I think a couple of people asked like you and Blake, how you guys manage that, because obviously both of you have very demanding jobs in this sport. So how do you do it? Hmm, I don't know. I mean, every week feels different, to be honest. It, I would say that's probably been one of the biggest hardships um, in our marriage is trying to figure all of those pieces out. Because like you said, you have two people with very um, just unique job situations and you're trying to balance that and be super focused to do your best at that job because it is performance based while juggling two little kids not grown kids very small children that are very much in needy phases of life so a lot of it i would say kind of is on my shoulders to manage that because he's gone i mean so <laughs> it's obviously going to fall on my shoulders when he's on the road sure. nearly year round but we we do the best which is not great at many different points in time has <laughs> been really really challenging to say the least but we're, we're doing the best that we can, and that's all you can really ask for. <laughs> well, I always think, I'm always impressed on how you do it. Like, mm -hmm. you are always very busy, but you find time for not only your family, but even myself. Like, you'll call me, we have our little friend talks, you know, <laughs> so friend talks. you do a great job at managing all the things. I just want you to know that. Oh, well, thank you. I have You're a welcome. counselor who really helps me manage it even <laughs> well, hey, better, to be quite we, honest. We, I'm yeah, a big advocate of that. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we um, all need that. It's good. We all need that. Next question f came from above the yellow line what advice do you have for women looking to make their way into the sport so for this um i would say man or woman you know the biggest thing is being patient because not everything's going to work out right away you know I, I can't even tell you how many different interviews and things i went uh, for and didn't get at the time and it was right. discouraging but you can't get discouraged if it doesn't happen right away and then as it pertains to media specifically I'm always a huge advocate of starting local I started in local racing working at Langley Speedway for several years in Hampton Virginia and it was just a great place to get my feet wet I met a lot of our current stars Bubba Wallace Ryan Blaney Chase Elliott through my work at, at Langley, but it was a low pressure kind of journalism job. You're not at a network level. You're just kind of like going through the motions, learning your um, skill set as a journalist. That to me is really important because there's so many local sports opportunities, whatever sport you're interested in. Now there's a lot of social media reporting opportunities. Those are great gigs to take as you're trying to get your feet wet in the hopes that you can advance up the ladder as far as you know media goes. But again, I think too, I've noticed with some of these younger generations, they're in such a hurry. They want everything to be instantaneous and it's not going to happen that quickly. You know, there's so many people vying for such a small number of jobs and you mm -hmm. just have to be patient. You got to treat people with respect, especially the people who've been there long before you. You know, I think it's important to hone those community like uh, connections and, and really make a good impression of people within the industry that you're trying to break into. So being patient working local uh don't be annoying gen z <laughs> <laughs> i love that i'm gonna add just a couple things be willing to do whatever like exactly. let's just for example say okay you want to be a pit reporter don't think you're better than being the runner that's carrying exactly. the, the ice chest and driving the golf cart and you know doing the less glamorous jobs and mm -hmm. also i'm gonna say it be willing to work for free no, be willing to work yes. for free to start because it's all about building the relationships and networking. So if you take a runner position, you're going to meet a producer, you're going to get their email, and then you can send off your reel or whatever to them. Um, also, if you don't have any experience, like say you're wanting to be a pit reporter, you don't have any experience, make it up. Go stand in front of the Coliseum in your town or the local dirt track and just right. do a stand-up. Just do That's a report as if you YouTube. were there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So just really do anything and everything and be a hustler. You got to work hard. And as Caitlin said, being patient is a big part being of it, patient. but just being yeah. willing to, you know, 
do anything. And I actually was approached by a girl on pit road at Bristol. She stopped me. Um, her boyfriend works for JD Motorsports, and she said, hey, I really want to get involved. I want to do something in social media or reporting. Like, how do I do that? And that right there was just enough to talk to me and ask me that. Because then we followed each other on Instagram. I gave her some tips, and I told That's her, anytime awesome. you need anything, you let me know. I'm always trying to help people out. So if you have a question or you need a contact, I told her, I said, I may not have it, but I could point you in the right direction. And that's honestly just from that one conversation, who knows what's going to come out of it for her. So that was really exciting. But we do, like, we do have, um, with Racing America, we do have a website now uh, called That's racerjobs.com. Right. So make sure you all check that out because NASCAR teams, media outlets, and a ton of people post jobs on there. And it's a really cool platform. So if you're looking for something, I know we've been talking mainly about being on camera, but mechanics, hauler drivers, working in the shop, working on the road, all those types of jobs are available at racerjobs.com. Yeah, that's a great resource that didn't exist a couple years ago, you know, for right. people to take a look, almost like a Craigslist for motorsports jobs. So that's <laughs> exactly. really cool. All right, next question, HD, what do you got? All right, from Brooke Ross, it says, what was your oh shit moment where you've gotten that sinking feeling in your stomach while on air? Do you want me to go first? Do you want to go first? You can go. <laughs> okay. So I was working for the Arizona Cardinals as an in-game host. So basically on the big screen in front of all the people. We had a tip, a ticket upgrade to give away, so we were up in the nosebleed section. Uh, my coworkers in that team decided they were going to pick out who was going to be the winner. So they told me it's the bald guy with the white uh, j Pat Tillman jersey, the white Pat Tillman jersey, bald guy, glasses on his head. Um, so I do the ticket giveaway. I give it to the bald guy with the white <laughs> jersey with the glasses on his head. And it ended up being a gentleman wearing a Joe Montana jersey, so I gave a ticket upgrade <laughs> away to a 49ers fan in front of the entire Arizona Cardinals oh, no. stadium. So in that moment, that's when I said, I, oh, shit. I do remember <laughs> this moment because you called me and told me about it. Didn't they, like, boo and stuff? Oh, my gosh. I was being – That's uh, people were hey. being very mean. They booed me. You're yeah, yeah, I was there for the boos. <laughs> um, they were telling me, um, that's why you're a dumb blonde. Uh, oh, they, they, Oh, yeah, it was very – I'm that's not going to lie. I went into the locker room after room <laughs> afterwards and cried, <laughs> and it was the first thing that I did on camera. So then I had to com oh, no. complete the game. That's and every hard. time I went out there, I just felt like, everybody hates me. I'm such an idiot. But hey, it happens. I don't know how <laughs> I didn't read Montana across the jersey when I stood behind him well, for I don't know how many minutes. But hey, I know the hey, difference, but it, it just happens. This job is harder than it looks. <laughs> okay, and there's a lot going on, and it's easy to make a, a mistake like that. Yeah, so yeah. And okay. it was unfortunate because, like, I, I'm like my producer, camera guy, like nobody really noticed either. So we were all kind mm -hmm. of in it, at least if they could have panned away, like, oh, right. wrong person. <laughs> but we, right. nobody realized it was. So, yeah, that's that also goes in like one of two of my most embarrassing moments in life. So anyways, moving on. Caitlin, what was yours? <laughs> I don't I we were talking about this earlier. I don't know if I have like a specific moment, but we were saying, too, when there's like big accidents, say you're working pit road at a super speedway. It's like, oh, what what just happened? Who's going to infield care center? Like all there's just so many things occurring yeah. all at once. So those moments are a little bit intense, I would say. Yeah. Uh, any mistake I've made on air, I probably won't admit it at this current time. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Next we'll keep question that secret safe. <laughs> came from Eric Trujillo. 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 All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you plan on having any merchandise available in the future, like T-shirts and hoodies? I like this idea. And I to do. that, I would say I would love to. There is none currently, but maybe there could be some. Yeah, I think that would be fun, Caitlin. I, I love too. a good hoodie. I love a good T-shirt. I like socks. I like hats. Like, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, we'll, let's let's uh, look into that. Maybe let's look into. Like maybe it. we should talk to Tony about that because she's got oh, a lot of cool yes. merchandise and, yes. and branding things. Yes, I'm yeah. Sure she can help us out with some uh, ideas on how to get that started. And speaking of Tony, she is here now. Tony Brininger joining the show. So great to see you. Thanks for taking some time for us today. We really do appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. We're excited as well. And, you know, you've been racing a long time since you were just a young girl, nine years mm -hmm. old, I think it was. And there's sort of like this misconception that you just kind of came out of nowhere, which yeah. isn't actually the case at all. So walk me through kind of your early days of racing and how you first got into this and what that was like for you. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like with social media, everybody just sees what I'm posting and it's like, okay, here she is, came out of nowhere. But I mean, like you said, I started racing when I was nine years old in go-karts and I did go-karting for a while, like until I was around 15 years old. And 
um, and started off as something purely just for fun, just a family activity for my dad to kind of spend time with his two daughters. And we kind of just would go on road trips together. It was very wholesome. Um, <laughs> but I took it really seriously from a young age and knew that I wanted to be a race car driver. And when I was 15, I got in a Ford Focus midget for my first time and kind of was introduced to oval racing and NASCAR. And then I was like, okay, I want to be a NASCAR driver. Um, but I was still kind of far from it at that point. I didn't get into a late model until I think I got the championship in a midget, which was my third year in it. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of made my way up and moved out to North Carolina. I was living in California at the time. And yeah, I kind of made it up through the ranks and I'm in the Arca series now, made my truck debut this year. So yes. it's been a process. <laughs> it's been fun to watch it though. <laughs> yes, it has. Yeah. Yes, it has. And, and you talked about in your early days, like that family, like, Hey, go to the racetrack with your family. Mm -hmm. I did that with my dad too. Cause he raced dirt modified. So me and my sister would go to the track with him and yeah. we were supposed to be the ones to race, but then we were too busy with other things, but you have a <laughs> sister who is a twin sister. I don't know if a lot of people know that Annie. So, Talk about racing against her growing up, because, I mean, we know how sisters can be. How competitive <laughs> were you guys against each other? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so funny. I feel like we never, I feel like we always knew each other's driving style so well. Like, I always knew what move she was going to make next. She always knew what I was going to make next. So I feel like we were always, like, we'd be making laps with each other and always, like, very competitive. Um, but I don't think we ever really wrecked each other. I think there's only been, like, a couple times that we've been involved in the same incident. So I feel like... We always had respect for each other, but, um, you know, definitely we'd have some beef after races. We'd be like, you were holding me up. And we're like, no, you were holding me up. You should have passed me. So, um, yeah, we definitely were competitive, but never really had any major falling outs, thankfully. Who's, who's older? Is it? Because I know you're twins, but one came first. So who's older? <laughs> yeah, so she's older by a couple minutes. Okay. Um, and I feel like she was always kind of the bossier one. And I was always like a little bit more shy when I was little and she'd boss me around. So uh, I feel like racing against her was kind of my opportunity to kind of be like competitive and like equal playing fields. I feel like she was always like a little bit stronger and more athletic than me. So <laughs> we were finally on equal playing fields for once little friendly competition doesn't hurt yeah. anybody, right? So you've been talking about obviously the family connection uh, and, and how you started out racing with, with your family. What's the reaction to what you're doing now, what you've been able to achieve and how far you've mm -hmm. been able to go already with your racing? Yeah, my family is definitely very supportive of me. My dad goes to a lot of my ARCA races. He usually just sits in the stands though. So um, <laughs> Love that yeah, he's very involved. He likes to get the whole, see in the whole perspective, watch the whole track. Um, but yeah, they're very supportive of me and I think it's still very surreal. Um, just making like my way up through the ranks and achieving things that I used to talk about when I was younger, um, is kind of crazy. And I always still have to kind of remind myself kind of where I started and yeah, it's been really surreal and my family definitely thinks the same. And then you're also, um, the first woman to come from middle Eastern descent to race mm -hmm. in NASCAR. So what does it mean to you to be the first and also represent that culture? Yeah, so that was, that happened when I raced Daytona, I think it was two years ago now. Um, and I remember when I first heard about it, I was really surprised that I was the first just because NASCAR has been around for so long. And um, I was surprised, but also a little bit disappointed that nobody really had that opportunity before me. Um, so that definitely kind of motivated me to help pave a path. I was like, obviously, you know, something's lacking in some area to where, you know, people haven't really been able to make it through the ranks um, who come from like diverse backgrounds. So for me, I take it with a lot of pride to hopefully pave the way in. Um, I feel like I don't have all the answers to how I can help yet, but hopefully by just, you know, representing and uh, making my way up, I hope I can at least make a little bit of a difference doing that. I think by just doing what you're doing is, is achieving that, no question. And, and I think, too, about obviously your brand is huge, but the results are also backing up all of the other things that you have going on, on on the racetrack. It's been really cool to watch you this season have the consistent results that you've had. Mm -hmm. Career Best recently happened out at Kansas. You were third. Congratulations. Yeah. That's Thank really you. awesome. Thank what was you. that moment like for you? You know, because it's just a validation of a lot of hard work. Yeah, it's kind of funny because it didn't really feel as good as I expected it to. I feel like whenever I choose something, I'm always setting the next goal. Like my first top 10, I was like, okay, now I want to get a top five. And same thing when I got a top five this year, I was like, I want that top three. So I feel like you don't ever feel that like satisfaction until you actually get that win. Um, but yeah, I was like, okay, like now I'm ready to go, you know, try to go for a win. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was still awesome, but it wasn't that... Yeah, I don't know. It was like super chill. Expected, right? Like, you were like, well, this is expected of me, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like everyone was like super hyped and I was like, 
I don't know, like a win always sounds like a million times better than being like, okay, third place. So yeah, setting the next goal. <laughs> Spoken like a true racer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know I know Tony and I, we've talked a lot about your, you know, progressing and getting better each week at the track and what you've been working on and how to get there. Obviously coming off that third place finish, that's a great one for you and you want to have more. So kind of talk about what you do behind the scenes as far as, you know, working on your skills and getting prepared to go to the race and how you you know, progress and get better. Yeah, it's definitely a process during the week. I, you know, train every day. Toyota has a facility for us and they have everything from nutritionist to a trainer. Um, so yeah, they're really great. They have us all, you know, pretty dialed in. I was just in like the heat room this morning with one of my teammates. Um, so yeah, we definitely do like a lot of training from like heat, strength. I did like five miles yesterday, so cardio. Um, so I definitely feel like, you know, when I'm showing up to the track, I'm showing up you know, as physically prepared as possible. Um, they also have like mental health coaches for us. So I also feel like I'm like mentally able to show up. Um, so yeah, they have us dialed in and then, you know, we'll get on the simulator and um, obviously I'm with, you know, great teams with Venturini and Tricon, really great with development and just, you know, really great people in those teams that um, have been able to help guide me and answer any questions that I have because I usually have a lot going into races. So yeah, everybody's been really amazing and um, I've been really lucky to have the resources that I have. There's so much that goes into it be behind the scenes that people don't really realize mm -hmm. um, to, to get the results on the racetrack. Uh, and speaking of that, you had 19 USAC victories in open wheel midgets. So what was the, the hardest part about making the transition from open wheel racing to stock cars? Yeah, it's so different. I mean, obviously you're racing, you know, like I raced on like oval tracks, so but at least that kind of concept was the same. But um, yeah, I mean, the car itself is so different. And I think for me, I, you're almost like starting at square one when you kind of go into like a whole new car. So I think a lot of it for me was kind of confidence. Just, you know, I w was able to achieve some wins and everything like that in a championship in the midgets. And then I go into the late models and I don't know who I'm racing against. I know anybody in this. It's almost like a different world. Um, so you're kind of just starting at square one and have to kind of build your confidence up um, while you're usually being humbled on the track trying to figure everything out. So, um, yeah, it's definitely tricky. And I feel like, you know, this year I was able to go into the Arca Series much more confident since I did the full season last year. Um, so I feel like that's kind of the biggest thing. I feel like a lot of it's just like mindset. I mean, they're all race cars, but you kind of trip yourself out when you're like, oh, I've never been in this before. And you're with right. a new team and everything. So. Yeah, and you've been in a lot of different race cars, and I know that for certain people, whether it's maybe racing dirt, running the road courses, mm -hmm. um, it always helps your race craft. So what do you think, especially this season and some of those other cars that you're racing, like the uh, Toyota GR Cup, yeah. um, besides ARCA, what do you think has helped you the most with your race craft this season? Yeah, I definitely feel like I can take away a lot. You know, I have a GR Cup race this week at Sebring, and um, I've done a few of those races this year and kind of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. I feel like, you know, I'm doing something so different. This is a new series for me. Um, I'm going to a bunch of new tracks and just pushing myself out of my comfort zone to where you kind of expand that comfort zone to where you set the bar differently. So that is your comfort zone, if that makes sense. It sounds yeah. confusing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I feel like I've been trying these different, you know, disciplines and pushing myself in other series to when I get into the ARCA car that's more of what's familiar to me. Just like from a mental aspect, just taking, you know, stuff like that from the other series, um, just because the cars are so different. So I don't really think you can apply too much like racing wise. That, there's a lot to manage for sure when it comes to your career and everything you have going on with the different racing divisions. So is there a person that you lean on? I know you, you obviously have spoken about your closeness to your family, but is there a mentor? Is it another driver? Is it a team owner? Is there somebody that's kind of your person that you go to to help navigate this business? Yeah, I would say definitely some people within Venturini like my teammates. I feel like going into races, I lean a lot on my teammates. Um, like Jesse, obviously he's won a bunch this year and he's a lot younger than me, but um, you know, I still really value his opinion and what he says. So I'll go to him about stuff um, and just like bouncing off of teammates pretty much um, more for racing related stuff. Like when I'm showing up to track, like questions about like driving and stuff like that. Um, business wise, I feel like for the most part, um, I have like a small team behind me that kind of helps me navigate that, but they kind of follow my lead on some stuff and we work together and um, yeah, I feel like there's not really an exact path on stuff. You just kind of have to 
Do figure it, it out as you go, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life. Well, you're doing a good job yeah, at uh, exactly. figuring it out as you go. <laughs> Thank um, you. One thing, one thing that is different about you is the brands that you've been able to oh gosh, bring into yeah. NASCAR and the presence. I mean, you have Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Uh, free people, Huda Beauty, like all these different brands that we've never seen in this sport before. So you are like making new things happen. So talk about getting all of them to come into our sport and then being the one to do that, the face of their, those brands. Yeah, it's been so fun because they're brands that I really love. Like I grew up watching Huda Beauty's makeup tutorials and I loved her makeup and false lashes and I was always so into that. And then Victoria's Secret, I was obsessed with the angels and would watch the shows every year. Same, um, same. same. Yeah. Yeah. All so of us it, were. <laughs> yeah. So it's been really cool to, you know, work with brands and bring them to the sport that actually align with me and they're things that I love. Like I feel like it makes it so much more authentic. Um, and exciting to do so yeah it's been really surreal and it's you know really awesome for them to kind of like take a chance on me obviously like I was the first driver that a lot of these brands have worked with um, so kind of just to take a chance on me and really believe in my journey and what I'm trying to trying to do is um, really awesome and special do you have a yeah. do you have a favorite Victoria's Secret model? I just have to ask. <laughs> um, I love them all, but Adriana is my favorite. Me too. Yes. <laughs> I met One her. Like, there. Yeah, I met her in Spain, and oh, no way, so that's cool. What was that like? Oh my gosh! So I was like, I'm just casually talking to Adriana Lima, and I had like these crazy <laughs> nails on, and they were all caught in my hair, and she's like helping me untangle it. Oh my gosh, she was the sweetest. She's like, what's your number? I was crying inside. <laughs> Did you awesome. provide your number? <laughs> yes, of course. I was like, Adriana, you can have my number any day. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. That is really I'm jealous. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I very am neat. too. Well, you, you walk, you were a part of the show, the Victoria's Secret show. You were in New York yeah. City a couple weeks ago, and I know that that will be airing um, later in September. What was that like? Because I was following along on your Instagram and stuff and kind of seeing it. That just had a larger than life feeling, that show. Oh my gosh, it was so special. Just even getting ready backstage wearing like the pink VS robe with my name on it and like all like oh, the models wow. and it was just so cool. Definitely very surreal that it's something that when I was younger, I really dreamed of it, that it actually happened. Um, but yeah, so surreal. And um, we got to see a little bit of the world tour premiere, which they'll be showing it. I think it's on the 26th of September. Um, so we got to see like a little sneak peek of it. And I was in that little sneak peek and I was like shaking, trying to like pick up my phone to record. <laughs> Try not to look like a dork or anything. But um, yeah, I was like so fangirling. It was the coolest experience. And it was really fun to do something a little bit more in the fashion space. That's such like a different world for me and to kind of branch out a little bit. So um, yeah, very surreal. Also in the fashion space, I get the Free People magazine to my home because I've yeah. been a devoted customer of that store for many years. And when I opened it up and I saw you in there, it was just <laughs> such a neat moment even for me as, as someone who's been involved in this industry a long time to see a driver, you know, being showcased in the fashion world and getting the backing of a huge, huge brand like that. That was really neat. What was that photo shoot like for, for all the Free People stuff? Yeah, that's so funny, the whole thing with the magazine, because I didn't even know I was going to be in a magazine for them oh. or anything. I didn't even know I was out. Like, I had never seen the photos. Like, I didn't see anything. And I had people, like, texting me, like, oh, my gosh, like, my girlfriend just got this in the mail or my wife got this in the mail. And I'm like, wait, send me one. I've never seen these in my life. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so it was kind of crazy. I was like, no way. And then I walked in this, to the store um, not too long after that, and I was on the wall. And, like, I didn't expect to be on the wall. Like, it was so crazy. Um, but they've been amazing and that shoot was so fun we did it at Irwindale um so it's kind of cool to do it at a racetrack like it was like a balance between you know modeling these clothes but also incorporating the racing in and I was like posing on these tires and um yeah it was just really fun to do and I felt like it almost made me a little bit more comfortable that was one of my first like bigger kind of shoots that I did with a bigger brand um so kind of to do at a racetrack with some race cars in there I was like okay I feel a little bit more comfortable doing this very yeah. neat yeah, yeah, I'm just so curious, cool. too, because the modeling industry is, like, totally something I know nothing about, but I've always been interested in. Like, I used to watch America's Next Top Model, like, it yeah. was my <laughs> day job. So are there any similarities or things between the racing world and the modeling world that, like, compare, or how different are they for you? They're so different. I always joke that I feel like Hannah Montana, just living two different lives. Um, <laughs> I would say one thing is I feel like you have to be a really good listener in both spaces and like take advice really well and like gracefully. And um, everybody's trying to get 
you know, an end result and you're working with a team trying to like work on that. So um, for me, I always try to be a really great listener and um, just kind of a, a good team player and everything like that. So I feel like you kind of do that on both ends. That is very fascinating. Really interesting to see you kind of bringing together the two entities in that way. Mm -hmm. Cause like we said, no one else has done that before. Yeah. Um, is there other brands, anyone else you kind of have your eye on? Is there some company that you're like, I'd love to add them to the portfolio at some point? Yeah, I definitely have a list of brands and I'm really big into like manifesting and stuff. So I'm always like manifesting. Oh, I want to work with this brand. Um, I mean, I would love to do like a Chanel or like a Louis, oh, yes. um, you know, something in like the skin. Like I remember growing up watching like the Neutrogena ads, like just stuff like that. So I definitely have um, some big goals. I'm like, I want to be on the cover of Vogue. Like I have all these crazy <laughs> goals um, that I always write down and try to manifest and see what I can do to make happen. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many brands. If, I, yeah. if Louis Vuitton is listening, get this girl yeah. a sponsorship yeah. for Louis yeah. Vuitton. Honestly. Yeah. honestly. <laughs> uh, I believe if anyone can do it, it's probably you, honestly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And now, now that I know that you're super into manifesting, no wonder how you've gotten all the things that you've gotten, because that's, it, it works. It does Our work. positivity so and, and it. mindset is a huge deal. But, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have some fun here. We're going to do some rapid fire questions, if you will. So we've been yeah. talking about your sponsors. So Hot Wheels is one of your sponsors. Yeah. If you could create a Hot Wheels car, what would it be? Ooh, I think the Hot Wheels car that I'm driving, they don't have a GR car. So I think it's super cute and would be really fun to have like my own actual Hot Wheels car. So oh, Okay, that would cool. Be cool. Um, favorite reality TV show to binge? Ooh, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I okay. knew you were going like to say it. that. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Yeah. Is this fair? That's fair. Favorite yep. Kardashian, actually. Sorry to interject, Heather. Ooh. No, you're good. Oh, my gosh. I think I think Kim's super cool. I think she's super business-oriented, and I really respect her hustle. But yeah. they're all, like, amazing. I feel like they have – sorry. I could go on about this. This is rapid fire, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, most – Useful Huda Beauty product. Ooh, I would say the setting powder, Chef's Kiss. It's really good. There you go. I have Chef's to go buy kiss. that. Yeah. Chef's Me kiss. too. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I'm actually going to need makeup tips from you later, but we can get into that. Because um, I'm such a tomboy. I have no idea what I'm doing. All right. Um, the racetrack you enjoy the most. Ooh, honestly, Bristol. I had a bit of a rough weekend there. Just bad luck and stuff. But Bristol is one of my favorites. Uh, Phoenix too. Oh, I like that. That's where I live. Stone, Phoenix, yeah. woohoo. <laughs> um, favorite outside of racing hobby? Ooh, I need to do more hobbies, expand, you know, <laughs> expand on that. But I would say like hiking, kind of like outdoorsy mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. I mean, nothing too intense. I'm not talking about like a backpacking trip, like a little, just a little <laughs> three mile hike or something like that. <laughs> That's okay. fair. I love hiking too. Good choice. Yeah. Good choice. Yes. Yes. Okay. And last one, favorite vacation spot? Ooh, I would love to, I haven't been, but I would love to go to like Tokyo or Greece would be, yeah, I like yes. that. Tokyo There's so many places I want to go to, but, um, love but that. yeah. Well, yeah. maybe next time you have a little bit of off time, you're sort of busy. You can right. try to get out to Tokyo <laughs> or, or Greece. Right. Yes. That'd be amazing. <laughs> so. We have to talk about this because it was a really funny moment that happened. And yeah. we saw, we actually saw Denny do the same thing. Like when Similar he was driving thing. up the ramp to victory, victory lane, he kind of hit the car into some stuff. But when you were in Kansas, you were working for <laughs> Raising Canes, you were working the drive through and you decided yeah. you were going to drive your car through there to do some pictures and stuff. But you unfortunately hit the curb. Like yeah. what happened there? How'd that happen? Yeah. Explain okay. that moment. <laughs> I know. Okay. First of all, you know, you're sitting so low in these cars. So it's not like if I was just cruising through like with my regular car, not saying I wouldn't hit the curb. Maybe I would, but like it'd be less likely, but I was like turning radius wasn't good, pretty tight. Couldn't really see like how close I was to really gauge myself. And I guess I had a crew guy like standing there, like telling me to stop. I didn't see his hand, like something was blocking it. And I just heard like that crunch and my crew chief was standing like right next to me, like in the window. And I look over and I was like, oh my God, he's literally going to kill me. And I was like, he's going to be like, okay, the shoot's done, pull out the backup. Like I thought I tore the nose off the thing. Thankfully I didn't. It just kind of got the valence a little bit, but it felt like I tore the nose off and I was like, 
oh my gosh like oh no <laughs> it, was, it was scary I felt so bad I was like oh no well just so you know I've got your back on that because they yes. should have been spotting you better because right? you're in a race car going through a drive through right. hello guys like especially with how hard those Venturini guys work and we all love them they're great yeah. and and they've spoken very highly of you by the way they enjoy working with you as well but I, mm-hmm. let's blame them we'll just put that on them but I just exactly. thought it was so cute and funny like, call or yell at me something like hey stop yeah <laughs> but yeah I mean, thankfully it wasn't too bad but it sounded terrible <laughs> yeah, I can't even yeah. tell you how many times I've done that in a regular car at a drive through <laughs> much less a race car That's so narrow it is okay wow. <laughs> all is well <laughs> yeah um so I want to talk about your social media for a minute because I have followed what? you on social media for years. You have millions of followers when you add them up between, you know, Instagram, TikTok and all that. Um, how do you kind of like come up with the ideas for your content and, and how involved are you in that process? Because it kind of seems like it's pretty much your ideas from what I can tell. Yeah, I've always really loved social media and creating content. Um, so yeah, it's something that I really enjoy doing. I think you know, one, it's a great way to connect with fans, but also you can like kind of be creative and like, you know, come up with your own ideas. And um, I have a team behind me that like helps kind of helps me work on some race day stuff because race day is kind of, you know, chaotic. Right. Um, so we kind of like, it's like a group effort for sure. But yeah, I've always loved it. And um, yeah, just like such a cool way to kind of express what you're doing and also just show people like the journey that you're on. So I don't know. I think it's so fun. I've never been one to be like, oh, social media, I hate it. I, I love right. it. It's always really But it me. feels like it's probably a whole other full-time job in itself, like keeping up with it. Oh, it is. And like how much time do you think you have to spend on that? Because I mean, that's yeah. been one of the biggest things that's kind of promoted you is you were able to tap in on the social media side. You're the right generation for it. Um, that has just been like such a great tool for you to promote your career. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely, I definitely have to kind of work on balancing everything. Um, it is such like an important tool for me because that's also, you know, one, like it's a great way to connect fans and like really, you know, build your brand and, you know, fan base and everything. Um, but also to get sponsorships. I mean, I feel like, you know, racing, it's very expensive, but it's pay to play. So if you don't get those sponsors then you know, I'm not going to go racing and, you know, the first, I feel like, I mean, I don't think it was always like this. Obviously, social media is on the come up. But the first thing that brands ask is, you know, how many followers do you have? And obviously, people are conscious of results. And, you know, you want to get good results. And people care about that. But the first question is always social media. Because that's how, you know, you're going to get the brand exposure. So, yeah, it's been a really important tool for me. So, I love it. But also, I know it's important for me to balance it. So, I try to be, like, conscious of, like, you know, getting ready for racing. But also putting in that time on social media. So, yeah, it's a little stressful sometimes, but I enjoy it and I love the chaos, so it's okay. <laughs> cool. well, you do a great job because yeah. I see her at the track, Caitlin, all the time. I'm trying to avoid being in her video sometimes because I'll be walking. I'm like, oh no, TikTok. I gotta go. Like, because I don't want to ruin it because she's like doing her awesome in the zone. walk and like she's in the zone and yeah. it's really cool. But you're doing a great job at balancing Thank all you. of that. But let's get back a little bit to women in racing. Obviously, there's no denying that we're in a male dominated sport. Mm-hmm. So for you being a woman, how has that been being that you're in that male dominated industry, but then also are there any hardships or anything that you've had to deal with um, on that side of things? Yeah, luckily I've been with, you know, really great teams like Venturini and Tricon where they treat me like an equal, like a driver. They don't treat me like a girl, but I feel like it's, you know, I didn't really have family in racing before me. So I kind of had to make connections by myself and kind of navigate and, you know, make mistakes with teams that, you know, sometimes just saw me as like, oh, she's just a girl, like she's not going to win or they like kind of baby me and sugarcoat things to where it's really not productive. Um, so it's definitely t- taken time for me to find people that, you know, I could really gel with and work with. And it's like a productive situation. Um, so Venturini has been really great. Tricon has been great. But yeah, it's kind of tricky to navigate sometimes. I feel like, you know, even people consciously by act, like not consciously, they treat you a little bit different. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm sure you guys experience the same thing, too. So yeah, yeah. It's a for sure that I, the, it can be, and that's why it's important to have good people ar- around you. I would say to help you with that. Is there a female you looked up to in racing? Someone who was sort of like, you know, what you wanted to attain at some point? Yeah, I would say you know when I first started in go kart, Danica Patrick was you know the most prominent female, and um, I do think like it helped you know seeing her do it. 
that it like normalizes it to me like, oh, there's, you know, there's a girl racing. I can do that too. I think representation is so important because seeing is believing. So I think just, you know, with her being in the spotlight and just like doing her thing racing, I was like, okay, cool. She's doing it. I can too. Um, so yeah, I definitely think she was somebody like when I was really young, um, I saw her and I was like, okay, sick. I'm gonna do what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> now you're you're bec- you're becoming that girl for a lot yes, of a lot of young ladies coming up as well. So there's a mm-hmm. lot of females um, that are younger than you that are coming up the ranks. Is there anybody that you have your eyes on as one of the talented drivers coming up that's a female? Yeah, there's been I've met so many of them, especially at like late model races and stuff, and um, it's really exciting to see. I feel like definitely when I started racing, you know, there's some girls coming up, but now I feel like there's so many more. So. Um, it's exciting. I'll get messages all the time on Instagram and everything like that. Well, you are definitely paving the way for many other young women to come through into the sport. So every guest we have on here, we ask them, what fuels you? What is the thing that probably inspires you the most to go after your goals? I would say it's changed. I think, you know, initially, I mean, I kind of have like two answers to this. I would say, like, I feel like I, I feel like you have to fuel yourself to like some extent, like you have to really want it yourself. Nobody can want it more than you. Um, so I would say I just have like, I've always just had that kind of like ambition to like pursue this and, you know, make it in the sport, but also fans and just, you know, getting messages on Instagram from younger girls saying, oh, like seeing you do this is really inspiring for me to pursue something in motorsports or even somebody that's not trying to pursue something in motorsports if they're trying to do something that's considered like out of the box um, for them to say that seeing me racing is inspiring for them is really cool because um, growing up, I always just, it was just what I do. I never thought it was inspiring or anything. So it's kind of like a newer concept that people are to me that people are inspired by it. So, um, it's been really special and I do kind of like carry that a little bit on my shoulders. Like I want to do well Mm. because I think it helps other people and, um, not to put like negative pressure on myself, but I think if I didn't do well, then it would just fuel the fact that people think, Oh, like girls can't drive. So, so yeah, it's a little bit of pressure, but I'll get stuff. Very good. I love that answer. And we are so appreciative of your time today and everything that you've done in the sport. It's been so awesome to watch your career growth and all the results you've been having on track, too. So good luck to you the rest of the season. We're going to be rooting for you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, I really enjoyed that conversation with her. And I know you get to talk to her a lot, obviously, out at the racetrack. But I'm just so impressed with everything she's been able to do with her career. I feel like listening to her talk about those big brands and things she's brought in, that is not easy. I mean, you see drivers who've been at this a lot, like, way longer that don't even have that kind of backing that she's been able to secure. Right, right. And I I think one thing that stood out to me was how she said that she kind of was uh, visualizing those things, like putting it down, that that's what I'm manifesting. I want to achieve this. And she spoke a lot about mindset too, which I kind of wanted to get a little bit more into, but she has mental coaches. She said multiple times it's about mindset and racing. And I think for her age to be at that level of where she's at mentally is mm-hmm. really awesome to see. You can see that she just kind of has it all together, especially yes. to be doing all the big things she's doing. I mean, come on, you're at a Victoria's Secret fashion show, fashion show. and Adriana mm. Lima's talking to you, and you're just like, Ask oh, yeah, for it's your great. Number. we're fine. <laughs> yeah, like, what? I would be, like, totally out of my mind in that moment, which I think she had that moment too, but then to right. carry herself with such, like, poise and mm-hmm. just, like, yeah, it's fine. We're good. Like, so impressive. I really enjoyed that. That was a good conversation for sure. Yeah, I agree. To your point, a lot of mental toughness for her, mm-hmm. no doubt about mm-hmm. it. So thanks to Tony for coming on the show this week. So time now for our pit whip, what we are most looking forward to as the weekend approaches. I know I'm just excited for another playoff race when it comes to the Cup Series because everything we saw at Bristol was super exciting. I'll be curious to see if Denny Hamlin and company can just carry the momentum on to the Lone Star State. We've talked for so many years about when will Denny win that elusive championship. And he seems to believe, and he's on quote with this, that it is his year. So I would love to see kind of how things play out for that team moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be interesting because now that we're into the next round and this is, I think some people have said this is the round that they're most worried about because Talladega is in it. And that's that wild card that can just kind of. Bite Knock you. you out. Yep. yep. Bite you in the butt. So it'll be interesting <laughs> to see. Um, I don't know. We'll see if Denny can make it through and get to the championship four. I think he's he's got the uh, drive behind him and the hunger this year, I think. So right. I would probably agree with him. But again, he's got to get through these next few rounds, among many other drivers that are in the playoffs as well. But I actually have the weekend off, Caitlin. And there I'm really excited about it. That I love what thing. we do. I know I yes. love what we do. But 
I've only had one off weekend since um, the clash back in February. So I'm looking yep. forward to just spending some time in Arizona here. We've got um, a friend coming into town and we're having a little girls weekend staycation oh, in Old Town Scottsdale. And we're going to Boots in the Park, which is a two day country concert. Oh, so I'm going to see so uh, fun. Dustin Lynch. Yeah, Blake Shelton, Brooks and Dunn. Like we're going to have a good time. So I'm going to have my boots on and boots scooting boogieing through the weekend. <laughs> That's my plan. I can't wait to hear all about it. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, sure I'll have good stories for you. <laughs> <laughs> Will you enjoy it? And uh, we'll see everybody in two weeks. Thanks for listening.